So according to an article produced on March 21st, 2021, there are 19 different Amazon FBA marketplaces. So what does that mean for you and which marketplace should you get started selling in as a beginner Amazon seller? That's what I'm going to be explaining to you guys in this video. And I'm actually also going to be kind of rambling off all the Amazon marketplaces for you. So that way you can kind of start thinking about, you know, um, which one you should consider and so on. Now, those of you that are new to this channel, welcome. My name is Bashar Katu and I'm the founder of BJK University, an education company with a mission to impact 1 million lives. So. First, I'm going to ramble off all the marketplaces if you want to write them down. And then I'm going to talk about, you know, how and which marketplace you can sell from and kind of give you an explanation and then which one you should sell in. OK, so the very first one is the United States, Canada, Mexico, United Kingdom, Germany, France, Italy, Spain, Japan, Singapore, United Arab uh, Emirates, Emirates, em em Emirates. I think that Emirates, I think that's how you pronounce it, UAE, uh, Brazil, Australia, India, Netherlands, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, Sweden, and Poland. Okay. Now, one thing that I want to make very clear is that for you as a seller, you don't have to live in one of those countries for you to sell in it. What I mean by this is that I live in the United States. I sell in the United States. Obviously, that makes sense. But I also can sell or I do sell in uh, UK and in Germany and Canada, right? But I can also sell in France, Italy, Spain, Japan, India, Netherlands. I can sell in all the other marketplaces. I don't need to physically be located in any of those marketplaces in order for me to sell in any of those marketplaces. And that is something that a lot of beginner sellers get confused and say, but Amazon is not available in my country. Well, Amazon does not have to have a... Uh, a marketplace in your country for you to become an Amazon seller. So for instance, let's just pick a country that, is, that doesn't have an Amazon. Uh, uh, so let's say Austria, not Australia, but Austria. Well, Australia used to have, um, I think Australia actually got removed because I remember Australia used to have a marketplace, but I think it got removed uh, recently. But let's just say Austria, for example, right? Austria does not have a marketplace. So there is no like Amazon dot Austria or whatever, right? But someone who lives in Austria can sell in the United States, can sell in France and Japan and in uh, India and Netherlands and Turkey. It doesn't matter, right? So that's something that I just wanted to make sure that you guys understand. Cool? Cool. Great. Now, the second thing is, as a beginner seller, where should you start selling? The very first one, and I'm going to tell you kind of the pros and cons as well of where, you know, like, why should you start here and not here? And why should you start here and not here? So the very first, you know, um, marketplace that a lot of people look into is North America. North America includes United States, Canada, Mexico. I personally always suggest you start with the United States for one specific reason, because there is the highest demand in the USA, right? Now, also, on the other hand, there is the highest competition because everyone wants to sell in the United States, right? So that's the first thing. The second thing is you can also look into places like, so like the first one is the United States. The second one for me personally is Germany and then UK, right? And then Canada and then kind of like Europe. So places like UK, Germany, Canada, uh, um, anywhere in Europe, like France, Italy, Spain, those will be less demand, but also less competition, right? So what I would personally do as a beginner seller is if you lived outside of the US, what I would do is probably look and see if there is a local US marketplace in your, in your own country. If there is, I would probably start there. Why? Because shipping actually becomes a little easier for like refunds, if you need to pull inventory out of Amazon, if you want to store inventory locally. So let's say you start with a product, you order 300 units, and then all of a sudden you realize, okay, I need like 500 units every single month. You order a thousand units, but Amazon only allows you to ship 500 units. Well, you can ship the remaining 500 over to your place. And then every time you, you know, your inventory levels get lower in Amazon, you can start shipping from your place to Amazon, where if say you live in, I don't know, in uh, uh, Australia, and then you're selling in USA, you have to store these, these, this inventory in a, where, in a where, uh, local warehouse in the United States. So that way it's closer to be shipped to the warehouses, right? Now, obviously, that only becomes an issue if you order in, in big bulk, if you're going to order 500 to 1,000 units. Otherwise, 
Amazon should be able to store all of your inventory and you shouldn't have that issue. Um, the other thing is, you know, especially if, if it is a non, it's, it's a country that's non-English speaking, it would make sense because you understand the language. Like one thing that we've had an issue with is when we started selling in Germany, we did not, we, obviously I don't speak German, and none of my team speaks German. And so the issue that we had was hiring someone to do the listing for us, but it's like we can't go and check the listing, make sure everything is up to our standards because we don't understand the language, right? So we had to depend on their translation because we would give it to them in English, they would translate it to German, and then kind of, you know, so that was a, a, an issue for us. So again, if you live in the United States, I would suggest that you start selling in the US. I would also, what I would do is, if you find a good product, I would search it in multiple marketplaces and see where is the lowest competition. The other thing that I would suggest is if you find, and when you find a good product to be sold in one marketplace, for you to scale your business, and instead of going and finding more products to sell in that same marketplace, you can try to research that product in other marketplaces and see how the competition and how the demand is because it's a lot easier to relaunch the same product in multiple marketplaces because you already have the product, you already have the supplier, you already have everything. You just ship, in, you know, you just buy another couple hundred units and then ship them to this other warehouse in this other marketplace. Uh, then going and finding another product. The other cool thing is that if you do sell in the United States uh, in North America, so when you apply for North America, you get uh, U.S., Canada, Mexico. You could actually sell, and there's this uh, program by Amazon called Remote Fulfillment by FBA. And what it does is it simply takes um, inventory from your Amazon USA warehouse, and then you can actually sell it on uh, Canada without you shipping new inventory to the Canadian marketplace. So this is just kind of you know my opinion on you know number one you know all the different kinds. So let me repeat them again for you. The 19 marketplaces, United States, Canada, Mexico, United Kingdom, so UK, uh, Germany, France, Italy, Spain, Japan, Singapore, UAE, Brazil, Australia, oh, there's Australia, India, Netherlands, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, Sweden, and Poland, right? Um, and so if you have a marketplace in your country, start there, and then you can, be, and then to grow your business before you branch into other uh, products, I would highly suggest that you start looking into, you know, uh, 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 launching the same product in different marketplaces and go about it that way. Outside of that, if you guys really enjoy what I just talked about, but you'd rather have someone walk you through the process step by step, below this video there's a short, there's a link to a short presentation where we teach you and walk you through how BJK University can, um, you know, pretty much help you, help guide you, walk you through the process, hold your hand. We have five coaches that work with our students. We have over 4,000 students now. We've been teaching for the last three years. Um, I personally have generated millions of dollars on Amazon, and so we know what we're doing. We're the largest, uh, we are the largest Amazon FBA coaching program in uh, the world right now. So click that link, see if you qualify to work with us one-on-one, and uh, chat with one of our enrollment coaches. Outside of that, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.